Hey, a good day, everyone. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be a check-in on the Boston Red Sox playoff race. My other team that I love in baseball for my dad going on business trips and integrating me with their um stuff and gear at a young age, and then always going up to Fenway uh, as I've been up there before as well. But let's get right into it. Right now, the Red Sox are only sitting a half game because of their four-game losing streak prior to Nathan Abaldi. The dude that has really been the ace of the team while Chris Sale was out and has always stamped his name when it's been a big game for the most part in his career. And he does that again, shutting out the O's last night after, unfortunately, the Sox were not able to score enough runs in the first game of the series, losing 4-2 to two when Chris Sale pitched. But now it's about winning each game and controlling your own destiny. That's That's really all it's about. They talked about it. Um, on Nesson when I watched the other day, Tom Karen and others talked about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just all about being able to control your own destiny. And that starts with tonight for the Boston Red Sox as they're .5 ahead of the Mariners, as I said, but also only a game ahead of the Toronto Blue Jays. So they got to win tonight to avoid tying the Blue Jays if the Blue Jays win and to avoid the Mariners going up on them by a half game. So if we look at the Red Sox for tonight, going up against the O's. They got Nick Pavetta going up against Alexander Wells. Alexander Wells, again, is a guy with a seven-something ERA. The Sox already faced somebody with that this or this year, this series, I mean, and had success. So hopefully they're able to do that again like they had success yesterday against Nick Pavetta, who started the year really good for the Sox. And then now is 9-7 with a 4-5-2 ERA. So hopefully you're able to see more of the first half Pavetta because in his last seven games, overall, it still looks like a solid season for him from his career numbers. But in his past seven games, he's a 5-2-3 ERA. So you obviously can't see that Pavetta as you're trying to compete for this wild card race. So you're going to need to see the good version of Nick Pavetta. And trust me, I know the tail end since um, I'm also into the Phillies a lot. I know the tail ends of the Nick Pavetta um, train there. But if you can have the good Chris Pavetta for even four or five innings and then hand it over to some of the better guys in the bullpen against the O's and you can actually score off of this guy well, then you should be perfectly fine and sitting pretty enough to be able to win this game and win that series. So that's kind of the way I look at that. The the, um, Red Sox just need Pavetta to really come in and pitch, not like he pitched here in Philadelphia, which is what he's been doing of late and really pitch like he did at the beginning of the season in Boston. They need him to pitch like that tonight and really supplant his name as a guy that can also step up, just like Evaldi, in big games, because they really do need Nick Pavetta today, and he has not been sharp, like I said, a bad ERA over five in his last seven. So let's get into what the lineups are going to be tonight to face Alexander Wells and for the O's to face Nick Pavetta. Enrique Hernandez is going to continue leading off, having a good year. He's batting first. Kyle Schwarber batting second, having a great year of 32 and 171 RBIs. Bogey batting third. Uh, Rafael Devers batting fourth, obviously having a mammoth of a season of 35 home runs and 108 RBIs. J.D. still, of course, doing his thing, batting fifth. Hunter Renfro, a great acquisition, batting sixth, needs to stay on the team. Alex Verdugo batting seventh. And then you got Kevin Ploiecki is catching tonight, who's been a hell of a player for them this year as well, really getting his back going. and has always been more of a defensive catcher and pitching managing guy um, throughout the rest of his career up until now. But now he's actually been able to get his back going and has actually been consistent. And then Jose Iglesias, another very good pickup. I've always liked him in his career, uh, batting ninth uh, for the Red Sox as well. This is a team that has made a lot of really good pickups, of course, the Boston Red Sox to help them out. It's just they didn't make as sexy of the pickups as some other guys in the division, but they did make some solid pickups, and they are helping them out big time. Now it's just about, though, going through and controlling your own destiny. They just went on a four-game losing streak before winning yesterday. How about going on a four-game winning streak now and really closing this out and stamping your name in the wild card and telling Seattle and telling Toronto, you ain't getting it this year, but you are going to be a very competitive team going down forth, of course, to compete against when it comes to Toronto and even Seattle. Those are up-and-coming teams, but at least be the Boston Red Sox, be the Red Sox and show them that you're one of the biggest teams still in the league and stamp that you are going to be the wild card team. You went on a four-game losing streak, like I said. Now, like I said, go on the four-game winning streak. But for the Baltimore Orioles, it is Cedric Mullins batting first. 
Ryan Mountcastle batting second, somebody that's in the Rookie of the Year voting. Austin Hayes batting third, a very uh, underrated player um, himself who's been pretty damn good for them. Trey Mancini batting fourth. Uh, Pedro Severino batting fifth. Kevin, or Kelvin, excuse me, Gutierrez batting sixth. Uh, Tyler Nevin batting seventh. Phil Nevin's son. Uh, Pat Valaika batting eighth. And then Jemai Jones batting ninth. So that's the lineup for the Orioles going up against Nick Pavetta. Obviously, you have to just really watch out for the top four of that lineup. And then five if you want to spread it down to Severino. But particularly Mullins, Mountcastle, Hayes, and Mancini are the big kahunas there you want to watch out for. And then on occasion, uh, Pedro Severino is having a pretty solid season himself. But Pavetta, the big thing with him, he just needs to come out and be consistent in the strike zone, establish his fastball, establish his breaking ball, and just be aggressive. Early in the season, he was really damn aggressive and really damn effective. That's what he's got to do. You can't be like kind of spitballing around the strike zone here and just going on the outside, just kind of going on hoping the umpire calls it right off the plate. Be aggressive. Come after them. He knows he has the stuff for it. We saw it early in the season with the Red Sox. Haven't seen as much of late. He's been terrible in his last seven. So show up. Show it up now. Show now what you can do and step up in the big game just like Nathan Evaldi did yesterday. Nick Pavetta. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Go Red Sox. Close it out and win that wild court race. Peace out, everybody.